Creating and managing a good RFP process within any organization can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. With Salesforce.com, it's easy to create a very simple RFP process that you can work from, or even using the App Exchange, something a little bit more complex for managing milestones and being able to handle those really complex RFPs. So to start off today, I've created a very simple RFP process. Now we'll just uh, say, for example, we're going to go into one of my accounts here, Salesforce.com, and I've been issued an RFP. So you'll notice that I have the RFP right here. It's just a very simple custom object that I created. This whole series took about an hour to set up. So I can determine things like the fit. Now right now we're looking at product availability and you know, what kind of resources are needed. And as I go through each one of these uh, different cost benefits, timing, you know, how long it's going to take for this RFP to take place, I'm going to be able to tie in a formula field here to show a score. So I'm going to determine that you know, we have no competitors, this is a strategic relationship, and uh, I see that it's automatically related to Salesforce.com, and I can relate this back to perhaps an existing opportunity that we have within the system. So just from creating a few fields, I've determined the scope for this RFP. Now when I save this information, we're going to automatically see that I've associated a score to each one of these different criteria that we have tried to uh, recover from our RFP. So I can see that the fit score is a 5, uh, you know, down here because there's no opportunity, there's no score associated. I can see overall here that our score adds up to a 37, which represents about 90% of what we look for in an RFP process. In other words, this looks like a really good fit for us as a, a company to follow. Now up atop in Chatter, I might want to reach out to uh, anybody in my organization. Uh, I can see that Chatter's already tracking some of the fields that I've created. And I can just reach out to anybody and say, um, you know, looking at this RFP, any suggestions? And I'm going to share that with my community. Now once I've shared this information, anybody who's following me or following this particular RFP is going to be able to see that information and be able to chatter back to me. So when I refresh my screen, I'll be able to see if anybody has commented or updated on my chatter feeds. Of course, I'll also be notified via email if uh, anybody has commented, and sure enough, I can see that I do have uh, a comment down here that we have some solid processes we can flow from, and up here is actually an RFP document that's been attached that I can now download and work from. So I can see immediately that people have been replying to this particular chatter feed, and we can start to collaborate on our RFP. So now that I've determined what the scope of this RFP is, I can, of course, use any of the other standard features of Salesforce, such as attaching the RFP right here in the notes and attachments, and being able to see that that was uploaded as a process and attached to this RFP. So now that we're starting to collaborate around this, the next step may be, well, we can determine that this actual RFP is worth following up, I'm going to go ahead and submit this for an approval process so that we can determine whether or not, uh, from a management process, that this is going to be worthwhile. So based on a workflow, I can automate this, but I'm going to be doing this manually just to show how the approval process might work. So when I go to submit it, it will let me know that it might be locked after I continue, and I'm going to say OK. So now the next step is to say, well, who's going to be receiving this? Based on an approval process that I've created, I can flick over into my uh, email inbox and see that an approval request has been set up. Now these approval processes can of course be set uh, on any template. This is just a very generic version. But we can see that um, I've requested an approval for this particular item. So as a manager I can just click the link. I'm going to copy this and go back in and open in a new tab here. And I can see that uh, you know this approval request is here. Now I can go in and reject or approve this. I can put in my comments. But uh, I know that this particular uh, approval looks good. I know the ranking. It's about 92% match. That's great for us. So I'm going to go ahead and approve this, uh, this process. So now I can look at the approval history. And I can see that uh, 
while I'm also the uh, sign, I'm also the approver here, but that this has been approved and the record can then be unlocked. So now we're ready to work on this particular RFP. From here, there's a number of things that you can do. Once this has been approved, you could create a brand new opportunity that we can now associate right into our, um, our RFP process. But the next step really is, with more in-depth RFPs, I might want to get a little bit more collaborative than just a chatter feed. So I'm going to go ahead into uh, my chatter and I'm going to create a brand new group to uh, track around this particular RFP. So in my chatter profile, I'm going to go to groups and I can have a look to see that we've got one group that's already set for all milestones, but I want to create something a little bit more private. So I'm going to go in and say let's create a brand new group and we'll call this the, uh, the RFP uh, for Salesforce. And I'm going to make this private. And in doing so, I can send invitations out to members to join. So now I can say, all right, let's add some members into this group. And I'll just add several members of my team that I would like to have uh, be part of this private group. And bear in mind, private members are the only ones that can see what's in a private group. So you can share confidential information in these chatter groups. So now that I'm ready to start working within this particular group, I can collaborate with these people in the strictest of confidence. Using the at feature, I can start to type in people I'm following and say, all right, at John, uh, I've created this group to chat in private. And I'm going to share this with John. When he logs in, he's going to see that I've mentioned him in a post. And of course, he's also going to receive an email notification that I've mentioned him in a post, just in case he's not logged into salesforce.com. So going back into the RFP that we're working on, I'll be able to see uh, anything that we wanted to collaborate on through our chatter group. So being able to see all of those files, the processes that we're looking to track. I'll be able to track who is following um, this particular RFP and being able to include them all in that group discussion. My next step might be to include some task management. So again, we can use workflow to automatically create these tasks or I can go in and let's assign a new task to uh, one of the members of my team where uh, we need to make sure that they follow up and uh, start the whole process. So we're just going to say, uh, you know, start RFP intro. And I'd like uh, this to be done by tomorrow. Again, we can see it's related to this particular RFP. And um, I can create recurring tasks, etc. But I'm just going to uh, assign this to John and create this task so that it can be followed up on. Now in the open activities, I can have a look at the tasks that need to be accomplished, wait for them to be accomplished, assign new tasks, and again, be able to associate these automatically if I really wanted to use the workflow engine. So as we work our way through this particular RFP, making sure that we're click checking off all of the steps along the way, once we've determined that, uh, you know, perhaps uh, if I just unlock the record, uh, once we've determined that, yes, we followed up, uh, we actually created an opportunity, and um, I'll just go in and associate this to an existing opportunity in the system. I'll now be able to see that our RFP response is right over 100%, meaning that we're ready to move forward with this RFP and present it to the customer. So it's a very simple example of how we can, within less than an hour, create an entire object, all of the fields and the, uh, the formula fields to go along with it, use chatter to update information, and of course, track anything that's been happening within this. So we can see that I've changed the opportunity, I've associated another opportunity to this. Everything is tied up in a neat little bundle as far as the collaboration piece goes. But what if your requirements go far beyond just using this simple RFP process? Well, Salesforce.com Labs have created what they call 
a PM Milestones application, which is completely free of charge. So I'm going to jump from this simple RFP and go in and have a look at this Milestones app. Now, when you uh, first install this app right from the App Exchange, you're going to have a Getting Started area, which will allow you to initialize this to create a sample project. And this sample project is, is quite simple. We can go to the summary page and have a look at all of the different features that are being included with this. So right now, the first project you'll be set up with is really how to set up this project management piece. So I can see in a graphical representation there are 10 open tasks. I've completed none of them. So I can have a look at all of my open tasks, see what kind of time and budget analysis are associated to that. As I scroll down, I can see a Gantt chart that will allow me to not only see these tasks in a visual way, but also take them and modify these in any way that I need to. So we can have a look at this milestone. As I drill down, I can see the next step is to create the RFP process um, development. I can see all of the tasks that are assigned to this particular task, as well as tracking all of the budgetary all of the metrics and hours that may go into an in-depth project management template. But let's turn this around and have a look at what might happen if you wanted to create an RFP process on a particular project. So I've installed or created a, a very quick RFP process template here where we can now go in and have a look at this particular project. Again, it's all tied into Chatter, so you still have that ability to collaborate, create those groups. As I scroll down, I have a look at this particular RFP template, and if I wanted to modify any information, I can simply take this Gantt chart and move it out, and perhaps stretch a task into several days. When is the draft review going to be? Well, let's move out to uh, sort of the middle of April, and I think it's going to take us about a week to go through that. The RFP submission, well, that's not going to take long at all. We're just going to have uh, one day to do that on the 23rd. So I can change and modify my Gantt chart based on how I feel my tasks are going to take place. And of course, this will update those tasks right within the application. Again, tracking things like my total hours, being able to modify this information so we can report on it, being able to see how many milestones are currently incomplete and what exactly are we looking at for our next milestone? So being able to view everything that takes place within this RFP process from a milestones perspective is all right out of this application. So if I wanted to go in and have a look and say, well, is my RFP received? Well, let's go into that first milestone. I can have a look at the details for this milestone and say, all right, well, uh, I can go in and mark this complete. But before I can do that, I notice that there is actually a task that's been assigned to me, which is to notify the interested parties. So I can have a look at this task, go in and make sure that I've uh, completed uh, my information by perhaps chattering out to people within my organization. Maybe I need to uh, notify uh, people externally as well. But I can now go in and say, okay, I've notified people uh, uh, through chatter. I'm going to hit save. And now I can ensure that this task will be completed or this milestone will be completed. So now I can mark that milestone as complete is to say that we've done that first step of uh, notifying the interested parties for this RFP. When I go back into my original project I'll be able to see that my open task I now have one task complete and nine remaining. As I scroll down I can see that the RFP received that has been accomplished, but I still have open tasks that need to be done. Then, as I scroll down, I can see the number of incomplete milestones is three. We have one complete task, and I can scroll through my milestones to see that they've all been done. Of course, notes and attachments are available here. I can continue to work through this RFP process and tie in the platform that Salesforce offers. So I can use Chatter. I can use all of my reporting aspects and of course I can customize this application if it doesn't fit exactly what my needs are. The bottom line is each and every one of these projects can very easily be created. You can export the templates into an XML format 
so you can use it in other uh, systems. If you wanted to export from another system in XML, it's a simple mapping process to make sure that you're importing the correct information. Again, all of this information can be tracked and reported on. Now, this is a very high-level quick walkthrough, but I would highly suggest that you go to the App Exchange, look for the Milestones Project and Task Management app. You can watch a demo of this app, see some screenshots, and of course you can install this directly into either your sandbox or your production org or into a trial environment where you can test it out. Just another example of how the Salesforce platform extends far beyond just the standard Salesforce automation.